I'm going to be displaying some of the sensors that we use on our boat experiments at the Water to, water to Cloud project. So the first one is a HANA uh, HI9829 sensor. Um, I'll just open it and show you the probes. It measures a bunch of different things. It has a pH probe, a dissolved oxygen probe. It has an electrical conductivity and turbidity measurement um, available. And if you look at these uh, probes, these are the three probes here and then there's a rod and then it can also measure temperature and uh, pressure in the water. Uh, the pH probe can also be replaced with an ammonium or a nitrate probe which is what we do in the other HANA sensor that we also attach on the board. So we have two HANA sensors that go on, um, on a rod and um, in a minute I'll just show you how these are attached to the rod but before that uh, a bunch of other parameters that we measure include uh, uh, fluorescence values which are mostly optical parameters. Uh, this thing here that you see is a Turner's uh, C3 fluorometer and if you look quite carefully inside uh, this is a protective case and inside uh, there are three different measurements that will be taken care of by this uh, thing here which is chlorophyll, sedum fluorescence which is color dissolved organic matter and um, uh, tryptophan fluorescence. Tryptophan is an am amino acid that is found in a number of uh, organic content. So if pathogens are present, if there's organic content in the water, you'll see a higher range of tryptophan fluorescence in the water. Uh, how we go about doing this is uh, these instruments are attached to a rod using tags and the rod is then tied to the boat on both the sides multi-parameter recording meter for the HI9829, the HANA sensors and what happens here is it notes down the GPS position, latitude, longitude for the data point that's being taken. It notes down a time and a place, uh, a time and a date stamp and uh, a bunch of different parameters uh, are recorded in the local memory. Uh, we have tuned it to measure every 10 seconds but it can be changed anywhere between one second to a few minutes. And so as we go around on the boat, as the boat moves, what we're going to see is every few meters, we're going to take one measurement. These are automated sensors, so once we switch it on, it's all good to go. Uh, doesn't require any human support after that. We first initially take out our sensors, do the quick calibration, then we put the log entries for the particular day and time. Then we have our sensors attached to the boat. Uh, then after attaching them, we on the meters, we basically press skip so the meter starts get on and it starts showing the readings. And as we move, it's uh, the values keep on changing. You can see the values changing. Uh, so the in the water hmm? and you keep it in the water and the boat keeps moving yeah okay 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 so the uh, sensor moves along with the boat so they are remain in water for throughout the process okay. okay 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 so continuously throughout the process that the boat is moving the sensors will remain, remain in water. The water yeah and whichever path the boat is taking it will keep taking readings of that Root of the yeah. and it will keep showing on your showing in this. So once the sensors are attached using the tags and the ropes as you see to a rod, uh, what we're going to show you now is how these sensors go into the water. So this rod gets attached to the uh, other rod which is already fixed to the boat and the sensors will go in down. So the way this works is the uh, sensors being attached to the rod will now get into the waters and they remain in the water for the entire duration of the boat ride which is about three to four hours on a typical day and these sensors are going to be monitoring every 10 seconds so it's a continuous monitoring process as the boat moves around we have the gps positions latitude longitude also the temperature and the pressure and on this screen we see a bunch of different parameters being monitored the bottom uh, right corner gives you a count of the reading so right now we see 53 after 10 seconds it's going to go to 54 we see a, uh, different parameters here the pH is about 7.88 dissolved oxygen is about 7.87 milligram per liter which is, is the sign it's, it's, it's the sign of a healthy river the dissolved oxygen has to be uh, greater than 5.5 5 for um, 
aquatic life to survive well. Electrical conductivity is in the range of about 500 microsiemen per centimeter, which is also quite within limits. And we see the uh, turbidity values shown here. Um, this shows that the river uh, parameters are quite uh, normal. So this is a flow probe. And uh, apart from getting continuous measurements for the water quality parameters, we stop the boat and get uh, a number of flow values for the flow of the water um, at different points. So these are point measurements. We do two sample collections. Uh, one is for the chemical and uh, biological analysis, which will cross-validate our uh, sensors parameters. PH, EC, DO, BOD and other is the trace element sample collection which is used for heavy metals for example arsenic, chromium if they are present in the water or not. So what all heavy metals you have found so far? Arsenic and chromium in Ganga. And these are in small trace values only? Yeah. While some of the other agencies get a few data points from the banks of the river through collecting samples of water in a bottle and then testing them in the lab. We are where we are collecting a lot of data samples on the Ganga water. The, most of the samples are we have collected these on mobile sensors and that we are collecting and we are also say, uh, displaying them as an open source. So this open source data that means which are freely available to everyone. Everyone can see and use the data. Now based on the data we are basically looking for what are the uh, so the so that it can improve the quality of the normal human beings. So the people can use it and can uh, calculate that how they can actually improve their life. So one of the uh, some of the applications is basically how they go if they go for a ghat, whether they uh, can drink the water, whether they can bath in that water uh, river water or not, whether they can use for different purpose or not. So this is the one of the basic model that we are looking where they how the how they can use the water that will be one of them. So in this project uh, we are consider we are using the mobile sensor where sensors are on the boat. Because we are using the nine type of the sensor. So the difference between the existing solutions and this one solution is that here we are considering the mobile sensor where we can change the locations. So within two hours we can collect, uh, we can monitor the around six kilometer range of the rivers. As compared to the static sensor where we can pick only the four or five points in that thing. So this is the one, uh, the novel feature in this. Other is that when these sensors are the surface sensors, so we can monitor the water level around one feet or the pollution level around one feet depth in that uh, project and uh, collect the sensor then after transmit the sensor using cloud computing for the cloud for monitoring or for user point of views. This helps us not only get data at the banks but in the middle of the river as well as specific entry points, hotspots of pollutants entering the river. This is a more comprehensive method that lets you get data and an overall picture of the health of the river as well as its effect and impact on its surroundings.